Hey friends, welcome to Chime Coaching, Rob here. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how to get jobs as a data scientist here in America. Our buddy Shivank here has already had two jobs working as a data scientist. He's gonna tell you his stories to help you get a job like that here in America. Grab some tea and join us. <sighs> Thanks for tuning in. Uh, in this video, it's gonna be a lot of fun. We've got some tasty Chinese tea here, some ginger and some Thai tea from a boba tea shop. And Shivank has already had two internships as a data scientist. And we're gonna break down a couple of things. First, how we got the jobs. We're going to talk about what he did at those jobs and tips and lessons learned to help you guys in your job search here. So Shivank, go ahead and introduce yourself, buddy. Hi guys, uh, I'm Shivank. Uh, I'm from Delhi, India. Um, I did my engineering from uh, DC, Delhi College of Engineering and Mechanical Engineering. My, that might surprise you how I moved to data science. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I worked with uh, Denso Toyota for about uh, two and a half years and then um, I got exposed to some stats, uh, linear regression and everything and then I got really excited with this data science field and that is when I started taking online courses uh, on uh, Coursera and edX and uh, that's the time I realized that I need a master's uh, to make this uh, total career shift into data science and machine learning. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so here I am uh, at JSOM UT Dallas uh, yeah. doing my master's in business analytics. In your final semester. This is my final semester and I'll be uh, graduating in, in May. So we've been wanting to do this video for a while, but Shivank is a very busy man. <laughs> uh, speaking to students, teaching them about how to get jobs. He just got back from New York City, so I was waiting for him to get back from New York and we're finally making this video. So. I'm excited. Uh, Shivank's got tons of ideas, smart guy, and you guys are going to learn a lot from him. So go ahead, let's just jump in. Tell us the two companies you've worked for, Shivank, and then how you got those jobs. So yeah, I've uh, interned as a data scientist intern with uh, two of the companies. Uh, one is Oil & Gas Total, which is a French company. That's how you pronounce it. Total. Oui, oui. <laughs> And the other company is uh, Clickbooth. It's probably world's number one uh, CPA advertising network. So it's like, um, so I was tasked to, uh, in both of the, uh, in both of the companies, it was like failure prediction or fraud prediction, and also forecasting in both of the companies. Hmm. Now, uh, getting back to how I got those jobs, it was, uh, it was, it was tough for me. The first priority when I landed in America was. Um, was to study and uh, actually uh, get really good at data science and statistics and probably coding R, Python and everything. Mm -hmm. Come Feb, everyone was like, dude, that guy's from um, Cognizant, he's worked as a data scientist. This guy was in artificial intelligence, dude, that guy's from Music Man. I was like, what am I doing here? Because I was a mechanical engineer and all I had was certifications and mm -hmm. stats and coding and everything. And I think uh, Feb end, one of, uh, someone approached me uh, for a job uh, in, in one of the big companies for an internship and my resume was not ready. And I, I was like, all right, I'll, I'll send you my resume in a couple of days. And I never did that. Near the spring break, when everyone- So they asked you for the resume, you didn't even send it in? Yeah, because I was, yeah, because I was just too ashamed of my resume because uh -huh. I, I felt that it was not uh, something that represents me and it was mm. just, I was more of a doer rather than an achiever, but in real life, I've achieved a lot in my professional experience with my resume had this, um, it was more of a, it was giving, it was giving everyone more of a doer kind of feeling rather than an achiever. So like I did this, I developed this, I designed this, uh, did, did this, so it was, no one, right now, I think no one wants a doer. Okay. You should have achieved something if you have like a four-year work experience. So it, so it didn't actually show that tangible experience that you had. Right. Gotcha. Right. He was one of in one of my groups. I, mm -hmm. I remember you guiding me to uh, make group with random people, and that really helped me. Through the networking, I, through the networking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was not like uh, going to a networking event, but just like not being with your friends mm -hmm. or the people who you uh, who are in your society or in your yeah. uh, apartments, but people Meet, who are from a very diverse kind of meeting new people. Yeah, meeting new people. So mm -hmm. yeah, who are like doing their part-time business analytics and also working with data mm -hmm. scientists. So one of my friends was Josh. Uh, he was working as a data scientist at, he is working as a data mm -hmm. scientist at Southwest. And he really helped me throughout my journey. And it, it was really nice. Before spring by, I, I called that guy back. He's like, and I asked him if that job is still available. And this guy, he told me that, why didn't you send me a resume in February? Yeah. And I was just too ashamed. I, I, I just told him that I was ashamed of my resume and I, my resume was not ready. And mm. that's why I, uh, uh, I couldn't send it to you, plus please, but please get me this interview. Mm. And then from spring break, uh, came back, 
got this interview it was a really a low point because uh, uh, the interviewer started asking me about keras and pytorch and how many layers should the tensor flow have and all these things and i realized that i'm not ready for interviews and that's mm-hmm. when i i came back i started working on these things then mm-hmm. uh, one of the applied m- uh, machine learning course started uh, researching about how ats works and how does it pick your resume because my resume was not i think i started applying in march a little bit but most of my applications were in april but side by side i was also uh, researching about ats and how it picks your resume and every day every night i used to have a new version i used to include key keywords that uh, that were in the job description i also knew if not 100% less than like 80% of it if i knew something about it i used to include it in my resume not lying because like that's that's really important if you don't know tableau and all tricks you cannot include it in your resume because uh, I'll give you a real example in one of my interviews they've actually asked me in my very last round the second last question before the sprint question mm-hmm. was can you tell me the difference between all tricks and tableau and in our scenario which one would you use so it's your last round it's your vp round or it's your final second last question that will get you through and if you have lied in your on your resume and if you get rejected then I, I, you're going to repent it. So don't do that. Well, good news, real quick too. We're going to make another video about resume and ATS. Yeah. Shivanks learned a lot about that, so we're going to make a whole separate video. Uh, check out the links above and below to learn about how to do ATS and resume formatting and optimize your resume. Yeah. So you you got better at that. Yeah. <laughs> and so how did that help you? So yeah, I started getting uh, uh, interviews organically on uh, Handshake mm-hmm. and um, and Indeed, Indeed and Handshake were two of the portals that I used most. Mm-hmm. So Handshake had like 3 or 4 jobs every week. Indeed has, you know, every about 300 400 jobs <laughs> every day and then you have to like kind of uh, pick which ones you want to apply to and started applying started mm-hmm. getting organic emails with some questions from recruiters what are you looking for uh, when when can you start uh, your internship mm-hmm. and uh, when can when can we schedule a phone interview and all that in all i had like for my summer i had 11 interviews uh the very last four i nailed it and got offered from the last four but one thing i learned was uh, your best teacher is your last mistake so i used to i i have this ability to like recall what happened in my interview even for weeks so mm-hmm. i used to search if a interv- if a, if an interviewer asked me uh, a question about some kind of like a behavioral question tell me about a time when you uh, f- uh, faced a conflict with a team member so what was the goal of that question sometimes you have a good story but that does not um satisfy satisfy what they are actually looking for then it was a tough time i've had sleepless nights slept for half an hour have an interview uh, 9 am in the morning couldn't sleep until 637 because i prepared too much and then uh, that is one thing i learned one day before your interview stop preparing because so many things enter your mind and then you 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 you're not able to sleep in the night mm. so yeah that is one thing i realized and then yeah i got the finally i made the decision after a negotiation and everything to join total which i made that decision because it was kind of also interacting with mechanical engineers and it was a proper data scientist internship i was the only one over there and how many total offers did you have for that summer i had four four different offers yeah and why did you pick total because total was a proper data scientist internship mm-hmm. was not i it was something that i wanted to go get into mm-hmm. and also it was like weaving my past experience as a mechanical engineer mm-hmm. working at toyota and then interacting with all these people the and so sol- engineers and mm-hmm. solving a a engineering problem using data science and machine learning hmm. so i was tasked to do that over there how i got uh, most of my jobs were like organically and handshake mm-hmm. so 50% of the 11 interviews that i had were handshake and about 40% was through indeed and 10% through networking of course total was on handshake and uh, final four of my offers two were on handshake to work through uh, indeed and applying uh, online applying online mm-hmm. organically total was it was just uh, i applied for the job next day i got uh, a message from the recruiter mm-hmm. asking me if i have work authorization i said yes i do have work authorization so yeah she interviewed scheduled my interview and yeah i got it so my four offers were within a week and this okay. was uh, this was about in the mid of may mm-hmm. so i think 18th 15th may to mm-hmm. 22nd may is the time i got all my uh, offers and everything okay. so one week 
it was tough. So, so yeah. So you mentioned that people were already getting their jobs earlier. Yeah. And you were focused more on your studies, your yeah. first semester, yeah. and even starting your second semester. Do you wish you would have started doing some of the job stuff earlier, or were you glad with the timings? For me, it was a very different scenario because uh, this is this was my journey because I I had. I did some certifications mm -hmm. before, I have some work experience before, so what I did would not necessarily work for everyone. Okay. Um, I'm a very different person in that sense that I've done a lot of networking and a lot of leadership skills. I developed those things in my undergrad. I hope so, I did. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I got involved with all those things and before coming here I was kind of mm, uh, uh, quite sure that I don't want to get into this but more of studies so Feb and until Feb end it was fine I was only focused on studies rather than doing this but I did attend the PD class which mm -hmm. gave me an overview of how things are different as compared to India and US like yeah. and PD ATM. is the professional development yeah class. professional development I still had the pointers like how mm -hmm. is it different uh, between the country you are coming from mm -hmm. or as an international student, what are the things that are different in America? So ATS was the first thing which was very different. So yeah, I, I think it worked out for me. Machine learning and the courses that I had taken in my spring last semester was, were too tough and the mm -hmm. professors were also tough. Yeah, and, you had some uh, hard ones. Yes, but, but yeah, what I learned in those subjects really helped me in my interviews. So, so your focus on the studies and the hard subjects actually prepared you well because you knew what you were doing. Right. You chose the hard subjects versus the easy subjects. Right. You know, you didn't keep those till the end, and you actually were qualified that first summer. Yeah. And could crack those interviews because you knew what you were doing. Yeah. <laughs> versus faking it, which a lot of students do. Right. Right. So yeah. that studies paid off. Now tell us real quick how you got your second internship. Second internship was I just used my uh, what I did in my last internship. Had I had two pointers on that, and then updated my resume and applied online to Indeed and. Got it. <laughs> it was one application. Uh, one application, one interview. and Done. One week I was in Washington, went to visit one of my friends, uh, Shenandoah National Park, mm -hmm. and I wanted to see Washington and Virginia. So I was there and suddenly I got this and I was like, okay, all right. <laughs> so quick. So quick. I really worked hard during that March, April, and I knew what the hiring manager is looking for and what are the things that you should be highlighting. So I mm -hmm. had those, I had a great resume, I had updated my uh, last internship mm -hmm. experience, it was the exactly the same title, data scientist intern. Yeah. So yeah, that really matters a lot. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was sharp. It was a very uh, crafted application where the cover letter and uh, resume and everything was. I didn't make a new resume. It was a generic resume, but it actually uh, highlighted fit the things. Yeah, fit perfectly. And mm -hmm. first round done. Two days. Second round, hiring manager. I was drinking the same tea mm -hmm. at. Uh, the same uh, at the same shop, mm -hmm. Bobaki shop, and that is where I gave my second round. And next mm -hmm. day I left for Washington, and a day after Friday I got the offer. Nice. So yeah, yeah. Things weren't working out then because uh, Census Day was on Monday, mm -hmm. and uh, managing that internship with three subjects was really tough for me. Mm -hmm. And one of the subjects was in ECSS, and that subject was really hard. So yeah, I couldn't drop any subject, but yeah, I still did it. But mm -hmm. yeah, it was really nice. And just another good reminder that work experience is important. Yes. Whether your work experience back in your home country yeah. or any kind of work experiences you hear will be leveraged to your advantage. Yeah. And you're always going to stand out amongst the competition. Amongst the competition, yeah. Standing out is one thing I really uh, think is important and how you can stand out is if you make your resume on your own because you know exactly what, how you can change things and it's it's you. So when it's you, every person is different. Mm -hmm. Every person is very unique. And if you make your resume, if you make your other things, so it's, it's, it's you, it's very unique. So it really helps. Mm -hmm. It helps you stand out and don't mention the Titanic data set. <laughs> I've encountered this. <laughs> I've encountered this in one of my resume. The very first thing she said was, "I'm so glad that you don't have your, you don't have the Titanic data set on your resume." And I was like, "Okay, all right." <laughs> <laughs> Note taken.